Vamos a hacer ahora un salto y vamos a entrar en un ámbito donde últimamente en muchos espacios de la orden se ha dado cabida, que es todo el tema de los cuidados paliativos. Sin duda, aceptar la limitación, aceptar que a veces ya uno no puede curar, sino que se tiene que dedicar a cuidar, no siempre es fácil y es el final de la vida, que no lo tenemos que asociar siempre a personas mayores, porque hay finales de la vida también en la etapa infantil y por otras muchas circunstancias, se plantean sin duda un gran abanico de cuestiones que tienen que ver también con el ámbito ético. Ámbito, ayer ya se nos apuntaba algo sobre autonomía, sobre beneficencia, etc. Para este tema contamos hoy con la presencia del doctor Jargon Balner. Él es el responsable de ética de la provincia uh, austriaca de la Orden de San Juan de Dios. Él estudió Derecho en la, en la Facultad de Teología Católica y posteriormente se formó en Gestión Sanitaria y en Desarrollo Institucional. Es doctor en Ética Jurídica por la Facultad de Derecho de la Universidad de Viena y centra su investigación en los campos de la ética jurídica, la ética clínica y la ética institucional. Es, además, miembro de la Comisión Nacional de Bioética de la Cancillería Federal de Austria. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos, Jorgen, y tienes la palabra. Thank you. It's of course not easy to give a talk after Michael's um, story about fighting Ebola. Um, and frankly speaking, I'm proud to be a member of an organization that um, maintains services like uh, those in Sierra Leone and has uh, brothers and co-workers who engage uh, in this service. Nevertheless, my task is to give you a talk on the relationship between bioethics and palliative care. And I'm happy to be actually be back here in El Escorial. Um, I was here as a student visiting a friend who studied in Madrid. And we came here to El Escorial. And they always talked about Austriacos here. And it was very unusual for us being from Austria, because in Austria, the emperor is not called Austriacos, but is called the Habsburgers. So they were always talking about Austriacos here in, in El Escorial, and we couldn't identify uh, with the family that they are talking about, because we regarded ourselves as Austriacos. I tell you this because it illustrates, for example, um, that perspective matters. For you here in Spain, it's the Austriacos. For us in Austria, it's the Habsburgers. And maybe we, uh, regard, both of us, regard this, uh, these emperors in, with a little distance, also in a critical uh, sense. And I try to give you now also two different perspectives on the relationship uh, between bioethics and palliative care. And I will give you that in two stories. The first story on the relationship is a story of harmony. And it goes like this. Bioethics and palliative care share mutual goals and values that can support each other. So they go in the same direction, they have certain common methodologies, virtues, and structures that can support each other. When you look a little back in history of bioethics, you will see that bioethics has supported palliative care on a normative level in several aspects, and I will show you three aspects where bioethics supported palliative care on this normative level. First aspect is bioethics has criticized a model of health 
an illness that only focuses on the body and tries to so-called repair it without paying attention to the whole person. Bioethics, when it came up in the modern bioethics in the 1960s, 1970s, medicine was more, even more than today, some would say, focusing on technical procedures, on achieving pur curative goals of developing procedures, interventions that can save lives. And bioethics, or, um, back, back in those times, said, well, this is a valued goal to save lives, to keep people alive, to provide them with uh, technological health care, but that's not the only ethical, valuable goal of medicine. You also have to think of where are the limits and what is the anthropological model behind the medicine that we are practicing. And palliative care, also starting in the 1970s, 1980s, has drawn healthcare's attention to the psychosocial and also existential spiritual dimension of life and death. So both bioethics and palliative care have widened the spectrum of healthcare, have tried to remember that the person that is treated, that is where the intervention, the diagno uh, diagnostics is pro uh, proceeded, that this person is not just a body that has to be repaired. The second aspect, bioethics has argued for exact accepting normative limits of medicine. Not everything that could be done should be done. Of course, this idea that you shouldn't do anything that could be done technically is also an idea that you can just promote in a rather privileged area, like in Europe, in Northern America, where you often have the problem that you have too many opportunities for treating, too many uh, chances that someone says could help the patient, and you have to say no to some of them. Bioethics has, um, from its starting, from its beginning, um, explained why in many cases it is not only wise, but also ethically obligatory to say no to some of, some of the procedures. And palliative care has shown that withdrawing and withholding certain curative medical interventions while at the same time strengthening other palliative measures could benefit the patient. So palliative care has operationalized the bioethical idea that it is not always the highest goal to intervene, to try to operate, do a surgical procedure, to do another chemotherapy, another radiotherapy, but sometimes it is necessary to withhold all those procedures and to remember what the patient as a whole person is, um, what, what's the best way for, for this patient. And it's not always the typical medical procedure. Finally, third aspect. Bioethics has defended a decision-making model that respects the patient's will. Modern bioethics in the so-called Western world has started also as a movement of um, patients' rights, of uh, human rights and basic uh, fundamental rights of the patients to say no, even if the doctors, the nurses, the therapeutics um, say it would, it would be the best for you, in our opinion. Nevertheless, 
the patient's will has to be taken into consideration. And if after a consultation with the patient, she, the patient, never, uh, nevertheless says no, it has to be respected. Palliative care, again, has developed modes and procedure of shared decision-making where the patient's value are acknowledged. It's often hard in today's medicine, in, in an in a acute care hospital where um, procedures have to be done very fast, where the patient turnover is a very short period, to engage in patient contacts and to um, actually do a shared decision-making. And it's good, I think, that there are areas as palliative care or geriatrics where there is still the opportunity to uh, really get to know the patient and her values, her wishes, her fears, and to engage in a shared decision-making where both sides, the therapeutic team and the patient, share or try to share a common uh, ground for uh, the continuous treatment. So, three aspects where bioethics somehow gave the normative ideas and palliative care with its professional experience operationalized those ideas in clinical practice. And it seems, and in many aspects, um, it actually has been that promoting bioethics and palliative care can be an expression of hospitality, especially towards the patients and family, families who find themselves in great vulnerability, in critical care conditions at the end of life. So that's the, the good story, where harmony between bioethics and palliative care exists. The relationship between bioethics and palliative care is not always that unproblematic, however. And therefore, I want to present you another story, the second story, second perspective on the relationship with only two aspects. And I have slides on those two aspects because they came into my uh, thinking when I listened to several talks yesterday. And I thought that bioethics and the talk about bioethics cannot only highlight the good sides, the harmonious sides, and the, the, those things where everyone agrees, basically. So the first aspect is that bioethics does not necessarily share and support all goals and values of palliative care. Bioethics is much larger than um, a certain moral theory that is significant for palliative care. That's probably best visible looking at the debates regarding assisted suicide. Whereas, whereas palliative care mostly, oppo mostly opposes this practice, there are several bioethical arguments supporting assisted suicide. So you have a bioethical debate that is not always uh, supporting goals that are widely shared in palliative care. Bioethics all, sometimes is also against uh, the values of palliative care. And the second aspect, palliative care, vice versa, palliative care does not necessarily share and support all goals and values of bioethics especially in clinical ethics. Eventually, palliative care is part of the medical system. And bioethics, and especially clinical ethics, should be critically reflecting all aspects of the system, including palliative care. Palliative care is not outside the medical system. There are physicians, nurses, other health professionals working in the area of palliative care. And bioethics would say 
they also have to be critically reflected as oncology, as uh, any other specialty in, in medicine or nursing. And some practices of palliative care seem, from an ethical perspective, problematic and should be discussed. It could be, in the end, that the positions of palliative care are well-founded, but it is not necessarily so just because it's palliative care. So this is the other perspective where bioethics and palliative care can also collide. And that's basically my talk. And um, these are the two stories of the relationship between bioethics and palliative care. Both stories, I think, address crucial aspects. And I think that these two stories should be kept in mind when practicing clinical ethics as well as palliative care. Thank you.